Okay, what's on the bench today is a must tool um, oscilloscope multimeter. This is an MDS 8207 sent into the channel for review. Uh, it's a regular multimeter, volts, uh, ohms, capacitance, diode, deep continuity. Uh, temperature, it comes with a thermistor or thermocouple. Uh, diode, the uh, transistor tester, which, okay, whatever. Um, milliamps, uh, 10 amps, AC and DC, AC coupled oscilloscope and DC coupled oscilloscope. Uh, the off position is in either left or right, which is nice. Um, it has a uh, reverse uh, display, so it's uh, black and then white in the front, or light blue, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so I think what we'll do is um, we'll do a couple quick checks. We'll do some voltages, see if how accurate it is. Um, see if it can measure ohms. Uh, we'll run the oscilloscope, see if the uh, 40 megahertz, it says it's 200 mega samples per second and 40 megahertz. We'll see if that's really true or not. Um, it's got a little thing on the back to make it stand up. It runs on three uh, AA batteries. Those weren't included in the box. Um, comes with typical probes. And in the box, it came with a little bag to put it in and uh, the little uh, thermistor. So uh, you're all set to go and you buy it. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll set this up and we'll measure the voltage accuracy against, uh, against a very expensive DVM and, and see how they do. Okay, there we go. We have them side by side. Uh, let's go up. I'll go to the maximum of my little voltmeter here. My, my, my little power supply. What have we got? 20, 28.64, 28.66. Okay, let's come down to a typical range. Let's say we're going to be around 17.813, uh, 17.82. Let's come down to around 12 volts. Um, 12.645, 12.5, let's see here, uh, 977, 9.8, uh, 2.493, 2.493, so it's very accurate, it's not bad at all. Uh, it's changed, this one's changed to millivolts, so let's change this one to, change this one to millivolts. This one did it automatically, which was nice. 8.8, 8.8. So yeah, it's, uh, it's doing very well. Okay. So voltage checks off. Let's measure some resistors with it. Okay. We've got ohms and I've got some, uh, these are 0.1% resistors. So they're very accurate. And let's hook up this one. Yeah, it says it's 10.0 ohms. That's what it is. Let's go to the next one. It is 99.9 .9 ohms. It's a little bit, that's a little bit slow measuring, but it's accurate. There we go. 999. Nine. Um, let's see where we go here. 999. Ooh, 100. Nice. Oh, 999. <laughs> and uh, the final one is 10 mega ohms. I'll let it settle down. 10.5, 10.4. Is it going to settle more? Is it going to settle any more? 10.4 right. mega. Oh, 10.3 mega ohms. It's settling down. Okay, so anyway, it measures resistance really well. All right. Uh, I think the other thing that I'll test on it is let's go ahead and test the bandwidth of the uh, of the oscilloscope and see if it uh, matches the spec sheet. And uh, yeah, um, there we go. So let's test the um, bandwidth of the oscilloscope. It says it's a uh, 200 mega samples per second, 400, I mean, uh, 40 megahertz, a 40 megahertz scope. So uh, we're going to be using a generator and we'll be monitoring it with a... Uh, a fancy oscilloscope. So I have it set to one volt uh, RMS right now, and that is 2.9 volts uh, peak to peak. And uh, the little oscilloscope here says it's uh, 
1.06 volts RMS and uh, 2.95 peak to peak, so not too bad. This is at uh, one megahertz, all right? So, uh, let's see if I can get the glare off of everything. There we go. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to crank, uh, crank this, so that's two megahertz, three megahertz, four megahertz, right? You can watch the little window here. And uh, we can watch our oscilloscope. And what we're looking at is the peak to peak voltage stays about the same, and you can see it is here. So one, two, four. You can see that it's staying about the same. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep going up until we start to see it uh, do something funny. All right, let's change the time scale. Oops, I was in time scale. Let's go maximum. Okay, that's as fast as it'll go. It's doing um, 12 and a half nanoseconds per division. Um, kind of an odd, <laughs> kind of an odd number, isn't it? Can get the glare off there again. Okay, so let's uh, keep going up, and we're still measuring about the same peak to peak. So we're doing good, up around 22 megahertz. And oh, there's something funny going on right about there, around 20, uh, 25 megahertz. It was doing something funny. Now it's not sampling really precisely, and one of the problems with this scope is that the trace isn't always bright because it's always retracing. So if you have something that you're interested in, then go ahead and pause it, and then you'll get a nice solid trace. And you can see that it's not really giving us a pretty, uh, pretty picture. It's all lumpy and wiggly and everything. So at 27 megahertz, it's, it's definitely failing. Um, so let's turn that back on. Uh, let's just go up until it starts to drop an amplitude, so maybe in there, around 37 megahertz. So they may have just been looking at amplitude drop for their spec, but it's certainly failing before that. Um, let's see where I think it's kind of operating well. Uh, maybe that's there, or at 12 megahertz. At 12 megahertz, it's still a little bit wiggly. It's still a little bit wiggly. If I go to 10 megahertz, yeah, a little bit wiggly, but I'd say it's certainly usable up to 10 megahertz just fine. And then at 15, it's wiggly. At 20, 20 megahertz, yeah, it's just not right at 20. So I'd call it a 10 megahertz scope. Um, that's still pretty quick for a little, uh, little scope. So now one of the Big drawbacks of this, other than the display not looking great when it's actually when it's actually operating, is the uh, vertical sensitivity. Okay, I have it set at maximum vertical sensitivity. Uh, let's see here. Let's go exit. Let's go to volts. Let me zoom back down onto this thing here. Um, and yeah, I can make it less sensitive. But if I go up, the very best uh, vertical is half a volt, half a volt per uh, per division. So yeah, it's not a very very sensitive thing. And if I lower it down, here's uh, let's see the RMS peak to peak. Let me let me. I'm using my other scope here to, to monitor it. Uh, that's about a half a volt peak to peak. So yeah, it is right there at about one division, uh, half a volt peak to peak. So again, half a volt, that's, that's the only sensitivity you have. So using the scope, you're not gonna be able to look at little small signal analog circuits and stuff. It's mostly gonna be big stuff. So it's gonna be great for like working on automotive or uh, some type of HVAC system or, you know, something where the voltages are, you know, 12 volt voltage, 5 to 12 volt voltages. It's going to be just fine for that. But for a benchtop scope, yeah, it's going to fail on you. Um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be all that good. So let's take it back down to, uh, let's take it down to 5, to five megahertz. We're getting a really nice looking picture now. Uh, let's go down. Let's see. I think I can go lower on this. Yeah, here's... Uh, we will go to time, 
and slow it down. And still we're getting that somewhat that flickery, but it's it's pretty solid now. So at low a low frequency or low sweep times, it's acting like a nice little oscilloscope, right? So this is a, a 500 kilohertz signal. Take it up to a megahertz. Yeah, even a megahertz. So below a megahertz, it's operating a it's operating fairly decently. Yeah, you're still getting some flicker and stuff, a little bit of triggering error and stuff, but not too bad. I would say my biggest gripe is that the vertical sensitivity is extremely low and the input impedance is very, very low. I mean, uh, however you want to say it, it doesn't have good uh, input, input, uh, free, input attenuation or input, um, what do you want to call it? Impedance. Uh, I don't know what it's specced at, input impedance for the oscilloscope. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. What I did notice is when I was using uh, it together with another oscilloscope, this would load down the other oscilloscope. So it was imparting more impedance than the other one. Now, in the setup that I have here, uh, these function generators are set up to output into 50 ohms. So I have a 50 ohm light load right here. So the, the oscilloscope is not going to load this down because it's already 50 ohms here. And so it's not being used in a, in a high impedance situation. So yeah, there you go. Okay, I'll do it one more time with maybe a better camera angle here. Here we are at, uh, at uh, 5 megahertz. And we'll take it up to 20 megahertz. And I think you can see it's starting to act a bit funny here. So we'll go back down 16, 10, 10 megahertz. It's okay, but it's flickering and stuff. If I hit the hold button, of course, it looks nice. It has got wigglies on it. And then we go down to uh, go down to a megahertz, and then we'd have to change the time scale. But uh, let's see, here we go. Here's four megahertz, and again, hit this hit the single shot, and uh, looks okay. Okay, this is kind of fun. I wanted to measure the input impedance in in uh, oscilloscope mode, and so I'm measuring the capacitance of the input, and you can watch the meters voltage signals to measure capacitance. You can see that it's, it's, it's giving it a particular voltage and watching the capacitance change and then measuring that. And so it, this is how uh, this measures capacitance by these waveforms. And so it's measuring quite a bit of capacitance now. So that's why it's loaded down. If I go to measure, um, oops, if I go to measure ohms, um, it's actually, pretty good for input impedance. It's 10 meg ohms, okay? And uh, you can see it's putting a little bit of voltage here, but yeah, it's measuring 10 meg ohms. And so it's not a problem with loading the capacitance, loading re with resistance. It, it's a problem with loading capacitance, at, especially at high frequencies. So if we go back to the uh, capacitance measurement, yeah, 800 nano or 0.8 nanofarads is, uh, is quite a bit, right? That's 800 picofarads. Um, yeah, that's a lot. So anyway, that's why I was noticing funny waveforms when I had the two oscilloscopes hooked up to the same, uh, the same place. It's this uh, high, high, uh, high capacitance. But for, for most things, it, it won't get in the way. All right, that was my review of the Mustool uh, MDS-8207. Uh, links will be down below if you're interested. And uh, yeah. I think it's okay for some people and not okay for other people. So <laughs> figure out who you are.